guys, welcome back to my shop. I uh, just unboxed my Oneida uh, dust deputy uh, dust uh, separator. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot in the box, so I didn't see any point in making a video of me opening a box and pulling out a pail. So, uh, if you wanted to see that, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, this is what was in the box. You can get uh, two different kinds of uh, the dust deputy. Get, they have with the DIY do-it-yourself uh, dust deputy, which is like about fifty dollars or sixty dollars. And then they have the uh, better one that's got uh, more of the parts. Uh, it comes with two buckets. Of course, the top for the bucket goes on top of that. And of course, you have your dust deputy. Uh, that fits on top of the bucket like that and then it also came with the uh, casters some hardware piece of styrofoam I guess that's uh, so if you mount it on the box it, it's, it's if you can see by the manual you can actually let me get a close-up see if I can figure this out here you can actually uh, attach the dust deputy to your vacuum cleaner but uh, I'm not going to do that I decided after watching some videos online that uh, I want to uh, make a rolling stand for it I'll take my uh, shop vac set it on the bottom and this will sit actually on top of the shop vac uh, and it'll be on casters so I can roll it around and uh, use it where I needed that, which whatever, whatever power tool I'm using. Also came with a, a three inch hose that goes on the top like that. I guess this would be the inlet. Uh, this is what you do is you run from your run from your power tool like your sander, your router cable or whatever. It goes into the dust buddy, circulates around all the sawdust and everything goes down into the bucket and then the other outlet on top goes to your vacuum cleaner and it's supposed to keep your filter and uh, stuff from clogging up in the vacuum cleaner so anyway that's uh, the initial uh, unboxing of it uh, I'm going to get on uh, SketchUp and kind of do a mock-up drawing of it what it might look like and uh, I'll shoot some video when I get that done Morning YouTube, uh, uh, I've been working in SketchUp and I've got the uh, drawing for my desk deputy utility cart and uh, let's take a look and see what we've got. Alrighty, I'm in SketchUp and this is uh, what I came up with uh, for my cart. Uh, the dimensions are, uh, it's going to be 17 and a quarter inches wide 19 and a half inches deep and then from the bottom of the lower platform to the top is 56 and three-fourths and then the casters will be two inch casters the front of the cart uh, will have these three blocks which will hold the uh, bucket in place and then around the diameter of the edge here I'm going to put maybe five six holes to hold uh, different type of shop back attachments the shop back itself will sit down on the bottom I'll have about an inch and a half clearance up on top here so it's not right up against the uh, top platform and I will take the wheels off the bottom of the shop back so the shop back will sit uh, flat on the uh, bottom platform that just stopped from moving around when I moving the cart and stuff around uh, the back I will figure out a way to hang my hoses and put different attachments on it uh, but that's basically what it's gonna look like so uh, let's end the, this part of the video and get into the shop and start putting it together all right I thought it'd be easier uh, if I recorded my voice while I was working on this thing so I can kind of explain as I go what I'm doing. I already got the back side uh, built. Now I'm attaching the bottom of it 
to the uh, back side with those uh, 45 inch braces. Uh, I'll speed the video up as I go uh, so you don't get bored with me drilling holes and putting in screws. But uh, at this particular step, I'm attaching that uh, bottom part to the board. I bought these uh, screws at uh, Habitat for Humanity. I uh, got a big old bag like that for a dollar. I uh, bought two bags. One was a three inch and the other one was an inch and a half. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. Already got the base attached to it. Uh, got the cross members on, and there it is sitting on the floor. The shop back will sit down on top of it. Uh, I was real happy, uh, my measurements were right on the money. It, uh, fits nice and snug right between those two little cross members on the bottom. As you can see, it, uh, it's a pretty good fit. So, so far the bottom part is coming together pretty good. This piece here will be the uh, other platform that the dust buddy will sit on. And it'll attach the same way the bottom one did, except the cross members will be opposite side. So they'll uh, point down instead of up. Okay, we're going to continue now uh, making the platform for the bucket. I've uh, traced out where I want my 2x4s uh, to sit uh, so the bucket stays in place. It'll hold the bucket so it doesn't move around on the platform. I got the bucket centered on the platform and then these little blocks I've cut and uh, I angled one end of it. Uh, I just kind of guessed at the angle. I didn't use a protractor or anything. But uh, that way, when the piece of wood sits on the bucket, it'll be uh, flush all the way down. As you can see, one side will uh, sit flush on the bucket. There'll be three of them, uh, one on each side, one on the front. So I you know, can put it where I want and then uh, once I get it, uh, get them in position, uh, I'll screw them down to the platform. Okay, and that's what it'll look like. Uh, the back side I don't have to worry about because it'll have the, that uh, back side. But uh, in the front I'll also go uh, curve it and put uh, probably four or five different holes to put the accessories uh, for the shop back. And that's what the platform will look like. I bought this little uh, Moxon bus at Harbor Freight the other day for $19.95. Uh, some of those uh, ones online cost hundreds of dollars. And I just haven't decided yet exactly uh, what type of bicing equipment I want to use on that workbench. Uh, I might put in some T-Tracks one of these days. But this little uh, Harbor Freight vice came in handy uh, to put in that third block. Uh, I was able to hold it up like that and uh, run the screws in from the back. I'm telling you, I could finish these projects in half the time if I could find things when I set them down. Uh, I don't know if there's a special trick or what, but I'm real bad about setting a drill bit or I'm not even sure what I'm looking for right here, I don't remember. But it took me about 10 minutes to find it, and <laughs> I tell you, I just, uh, real bad about that. I set things down and forget where I put them, and if I could figure out a way to keep every, track of everything, I could probably finish my projects in half the time. I'll only find, I'll find it eventually. <laughs> 
Well, after about five minutes, there it was, laying on the floor. <laughs> so anyway, I found it. I'm going to take a take that third block and uh, drill it into the uh, bucket base. Okay, there's the three blocks attached to the base. Uh, the bucket fits in nice and snug, and that will hold it uh, from moving around uh, on that platform. So, so far so good. Okay, uh, got my jigsaw out and uh, I'm going to cut the front of the platform round uh, so I don't have those uh, sharp corner edges uh, to get scratched on or poked when I'm walking around it. Uh, as you can see my jigsaw is a good jigsaw, it's a skill, but my blade ain't worth a crap. Uh, so I think this blade here is ready for the garbage. So I'm gonna have to put a different blade in it. I got the new blade put in the jigsaw. Uh, I'm gonna put on my safety glasses and my hearing protection. I've been trying to get more into a habit of uh, using safety equipment when using power tools. Uh, I'm kind of bad about forgetting to do it until it's too late. But uh, I've been working on getting better at that. Uh, the jigsaw uh, seems to cut better when you plug it in. I don't know why, but uh, for some reason it, it just cuts through the wood a whole lot better when it's plugged in. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to uh, round off the edges with the jigsaw and then uh, we'll take it over to the belt sander and smooth off the rough edges with the belt sander. Alrighty, I got the, both curves cut uh, pretty close. Uh, I'll take it over the belt sander and smooth it off. Alrighty, I've got my handy dandy Harbor Freight ditch sander. I'm going to check the squareness of it because that table, there's a uh, gauge on the bottom that gives you a 45 degree angle, I mean 90 degree angle. Uh, but I don't know sure how accurate it is, so I always use my square to make sure it's nice and square. I'm just going to uh, run those edges up against the disc sander and uh, smooth them out a little bit. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, uh, except for uh, a couple extra passes through to make sure it's nice and smooth, I got it. Got the edges where I want them. Uh, I'm going to stop this video and uh, start a new part two part of my build. Uh, that way it doesn't get too long. 